Hello everyone, welcome to Metro TV. I'm your host, Andy Hoig. And we're going to revisit uh, some conversations I had with organizations in the community that were helping in the flood relief. We did this a few weeks ago, and I thought it was really important to just rerun this segment because that's ongoing, there are ongoing efforts that will continue on, um, honestly, probably for, for years to come. So please enjoy this, and we'll see you back here next week. Well, welcome back. I'm here with Jill Orton. She's with the American Red Cross, but you are the CEO, Kansas, Nebraska, Southwest Iowa region of the American Red Cross. So that's a big area. It's a big area. Yeah. And we're definitely in a lot of that area lately yeah. due to the unfortunate circumstances of flooding. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining me, Jill. Thanks for coming. And again, yeah, having this, this kind of special edition on the flood and disaster relief and just how, I mean, you guys are just on the front lines and you know really looking at how people are affected and people are looked to you so what what do you, what what's going on in your organization right now well thank you for the opportunity for me to share yeah. so the american red cross um is part of what we do each and every day in any community more from a preparedness standpoint in times that aren't disaster right but during times of disaster we partner with our government officials and what we do is we provide the immediate basic needs of our citizens that are affected. So that is really what you're seeing us do is set up shelters right now. Okay. And they're slowly, because that was the big push of what the need was of sheltering and then feeding, comfort and care, bringing hope for those that are now finding out that they've lost their homes, yeah. that they've lost um, belongings, they've lost pets. And so what does that look like and what does their life to recovery mean now? And so we're going into our second phase of what the Red Cross does. And so now that the water has receded, the roads are starting to become more passable where we know where we can go that is safe. Right. Is that we go out in teams and we take our emergency response vehicles out and we do start damage assessment of seeing what people's homes look like. And then also we feed and we provide to them um, disaster emergency services supplies. So whether it be a cleanup kit that have buckets and mops and squeegees and things like that. But there are so many other community members too that are rallying around. So where you just want to be a good community partner too right. in each of the communities and find out what are those unmet needs. And then we're a convener to help bring to the table through other organizations and our state government and county governments to say, okay, these are the needs. Now, how can we plan long term? Because we'll go into the third phase. Yeah, because it's long term recovery. Yeah, this is definitely a long term event that happened. I mean, it's just, yeah, you have your immediate urgent needs, and like you said, now you're in phase two and then phase three. I mean, the years. I mean, yeah, it can be definitely yeah. years. And what what's really wonderful about how this can be structured is that it's grassroots that yeah. long-term recovery really happens at home and it's neighbor helping neighbor. Yeah. It's being that Nebraska strong, that very, um, that work ethic that Nebraskans have. Yeah. I mean, we go out and our mental health was telling me yesterday, our folks were like, they, they ask, how are you doing? Fine, it could be worse. Yeah. And so, it, you know, it's people are strong, but also knowing that it's okay to ask for help because all these agencies want to wrap around and be a part of that help. Yeah. That's one thing I wanted to just ask real quickly. The mental health or the grieving, or I mean, do you have, do you help people find services for that or do you help people in that mental i mean so we do provide disaster health and mental health okay. um, assistance but we also are good partners we work with the medical reserve corps okay. we work with our different regions of providing that because this can go on a long time yeah. not only one agency can do it yeah so what do you need from the community right now? Well, what the Red Cross would love our community to know is really three things. Um, we ask to give of time to volunteer, okay. money to help facilitate all the wonderful things that are being done through the Red Cross, and I just told you a lot about right. what that looks like. And then also, if that's not for you, donate blood if you can. Okay, yes. Yeah. This winter has been very harsh. Weather has um, actually, we had over 500 units of blood products not be able to be collected in the month of March alone. Wow. 
Wow, that's a lot. So yeah, so volunteer, time, money, and give blood. blood. So where can people go to find out more information? So the best place to go um, is our redcross.org website. Um, that's one place. You can call 1-800-RED-CROSS. You can also get on social media yes. and look for um, the Nebraska Southwest Iowa Red Cross. Um, so we have a strong footprint in many places. If donation is a thing, you can always even text to donate for us okay. at Red Cross 90999. So we have lots of ways okay. to get a hold of us. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And we will definitely be checking in with you probably a few months down the line because, again, that we're here and then this is just going to be an ongoing process to help to help others um, in the recovery to, um, process. So, Thanks for yeah. having me. I'll look forward to coming back. Yeah, you're welcome. And we will be right back. Well, welcome back. I'm here with Gordon Krenz. He is with the Nebraska Humane Society Special Events and Development. Gordon, thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. Uh, not another place I'd rather be right yeah. now. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Dining with Dogs, a big event you have coming up at the end of April. But I just wanted to just chat with you just a minute or two. You know, we're talking about the flooding and, and everything yes. that's going on in the community. And I know a lot of people look to the Nebraska Humane Society, um, whether it's to you know, find mm -hmm. their pets, or I mean, it's just everybody, a lot of the people and pets have been displaced. And aren't we lucky that we have this organization Absolutely. In town. And because of that, because they do look to the Humane Society, um, their first thought is, I want to help the flood relief. What do I do? I'm gonna call the Humane Society, they'll know. Right, mm -hmm. and I know last weekend, or a couple weekends ago, um, Warner Trucking came out with a huge truck on Saturday, and I think you like filled it immediately. Very quickly, and uh, I'm glad you said that we filled it very quickly because as people in our community came to the table with wanting to help, we saw the need for a second semi, and Warner said, absolutely, we're gonna help you, and a second semi came out, which uh, that comes with the challenge of how do we organize it? How do we get the volunteers in there? How do we organize people that need the things? How do we show them what we have so that they can get truly what they need to go back to their homes? Because there's two pieces to it. It's the people wanting to give, mm -hmm. and it's the people that are needing the help. Exactly. So you're coordinating both of those ends. And, and I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, we have so many donations right now. In fact, we filled two semis. Right. So our concentration right now are those monetary donations so that we can help those people that need different things than the things that have been donated already. And so very quickly, we developed this place on our website, the nehumanesociety.org. And the first thing you see is animal flood relief. And you can hit the donate there and that goes directly to those um, funds that we need to keep those items needed for the flood relief. Yeah. yeah, well I just want to thank you because such an important oh. resource you are and just helping so many. And again, I stopped out on Sunday when you had the second trailer there and did a little Facebook Live and saw all the thank donations you. and the volunteers out there. And then they were just encouraging people, hey, if you need these items for your pets, please come out and shop at, you know, right. there's no charge. Just come in and shop. And another thing is Amazon. People have been very kind and doing the wish list on yeah. Amazon. Yes. The one afternoon I was there, the Amazon truck pulls up and I said, hi. And he says, I have 49 boxes for you. Okay. So right. our volunteers popped into action, opened those up, got everything squared away. But the kindness in our community is almost overwhelming. It they is. want to help. If they can, they will. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. So let's talk about dining with let's dogs. Let's do. Which is so okay. Much, how, what is the year? What is this? I don't, I'm is glad the, you asked. I think it's probably the sixth time we have done it, okay. but we do it every other yep. year. Because it because it alternates with black tie and with, tails. Right. So on the even years, we do black tie and tails. Right. And then on the odd years, we do dining with dogs. And um, one of the last few years that Judy Varner was there, our previous CEO, she saw a need for another large event. So we developed this dining with dogs and um, 
animal people are crazy. And it and it yeah. actually is just like it sounds. It you're, is. You're dining with your dog. The, if you, you bring want the to. dog with you. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the people that do come know that they're going to be around a lot of other dogs in close proximity. So the people that do bring their dogs know that the dogs have been socialized enough that they sure. can be around people and dogs and noise. Um, but a lot of them just go under the table and sit down. But people love anything they can do when they can interact with their dog. Absolutely. Yeah. And you don't have to bring your, I mean, you, oh, no. you don't have a dog. I mean, it's fun. I mean, I've been into it many times mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm a, I have kitties, don't have dogs, but I love it. It's just so much fun to see. It's just like a casual, yeah. super fun event. People ask me, so do you have entertainment? And I say, well, as soon as you get out of your car and walk in, <laughs> welcome to the entertainment. <laughs> It is so many dogs and normal parties like you and I would go to a cocktail party. Our eyes are up here and we're interacting right. with each other. Yeah. At this party, everybody's like yep. this. You're looking down and you're, yeah. No one knows the name of a person, but everybody knows there's Hank, there's Norm, there's Jane over there. Oh, there's Ted, but. Right. And you are. Yeah. It's, it's just fun. It's just a great evening of very relaxed people and a way for people to not only support the shelter, but enjoy it with people that love animals as much as they do. What's the date? It's the date is Saturday, September. No, that's wrong. It'd be Saturday, April 27th. April, yeah. And we're very excited this year. It's going to be at Baxter Subaru. Okay. The new dealership on 168th and Dodge. Okay. Our friends at Baxter have supported us for many years. And when this new dealership was um, built, just they opened maybe two months ago, a month ago, um, I was there and uh, Michael Bennett, who's the general manager, and Sheila Ike, who is, um, she, well, she does everything out right. there. We had a little powwow, and she said, wonder if we did an event here. So we really examined it to see, okay, how can we do this? Well, the main part of the evening, the silent auction, and the games that we have, and some of the appetizers will be in the proper, the showroom proper. Right. Just past the driveway will be a huge event tent. Okay. And so we will transfer our, we'll go for a walk. We'll take our dogs for a walk, go into the tent, and mm -hmm. that's where we'll have our dinner, a program, which a portion of it will just really touch your heart. So yeah. It's a very, very nice part of the program. And then we'll come back into the showroom and we'll have dessert and some drinks, and then we'll give you your silent auction items and be on your way. Wonderful. It's so much fun. How can people buy tickets? Go to nehumanesociety.org slash dining with dogs it'll take you right there okay and there's two ticket levels there's a hundred dollars and a hundred and fifty dollars yeah this so. is another way also to raise funds and bring awareness to the nebraska humane society and be with people that love animals just yep. as much as you do yes it's just so much fun yes it's great and the evening passes in a blink of I an know. eye i love it one of my favorite events it's just so much fun <laughs> so thank you for joining absolutely. me absolutely thanks for having me yeah and and talking about the flood relief as well and and how people can help yeah so, so thank you for doing what you do and thank you for letting us um, acknowledge our community for helping these flood victims yeah. Yeah. it is truly heartwarming when you see what our volunteers do for these victims that come and need help and assistance and our volunteers are saying let me help. What do you need? Let right. me give you. Our community came back. Take what you need. Beautiful. It's amazing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we will be right back. Well, welcome back. I'm here with Candace Gregory. She is the president and CEO of the Open Door Mission. Candace, thank you so much for joining me today. And today I know we're talking about uh, flood relief, disaster relief, and really what your organization, mm -hmm. what, what you're seeing, and how people really can help you and help those you serve. Wow. Thank you, Andy. You know, this is definitely devastating for our community. At the Open Door Mission, we're serving our neediest neighbors every day, but this mm -hmm. is a whole new population for us. And um, we actually are sharing some of our resources with many of the agencies that are serving on the front lines. Um, we have a continuity plan, so a disaster plan. So we okay. actually have some cots that we would use in, in the event that we had to evacuate our campus. So we were really grateful to be yeah. able to share those um, with the emergency shelters. Um, we've actually been um, sharing water, diapers, linens, and blankets 
at the very beginning because set it, setting up was had to happen rapidly. Um, so we helped in the original part of just helping the other agencies get ready. Right. And now, over the last week, we're now starting to see families who are actually going back into their homes. And so this is going to be a long process. Uh, people are starting to renovate. They're starting to do demo yeah. work. Um, and now they do need clothes because their clothes have been wet for so long. They're moldy. There's just not no amount of vinegar or bleach is going to fix it. And so um, many of the families that are coming through our outreach centers are now replacing clothing yeah. um, and we know furniture and appliances will be next that we're seeing people coming through our doors um, we actually at our Lydia house because we're full um, and we are in emergency situation there with overflow and just having mats but at the same time you have to use discrepancy we had a couple of families that were at the emergency shelters where moms went into actual labor and so they oh my goodness to our Lydia house so we have some brand new babies yeah uh, because their homes are not livable right now and so we're we're very grateful that the community supports us and we're able to be a resource to not only individuals and families but to other agencies yeah. as well. So how can people, I mean, so people wanting to give and again looking at, you know, you're here for a reason and, and helping so many, yes. but this just kind of added another layer Absolutely. So um, how can people give and what, what, what do you need? Well, right now we're seeing that people that are coming into our outreach centers are asking for linens and blankets and they are already preparing to move back to their homes. Okay. And so they may have been staying with family or friends or even couch surfing <laughs> with with their coworkers in yeah. many cases. Um, but now they're starting to get into the nitty gritty. In fact, our um, recovery program and our journey to work program are out in the fields actually starting to clean up mud from people's homes and doing all those things. And so, and we're grateful to do it. Yeah. Um, but we know that those household items and things are going to have to be replaced. And so we are starting at our outreach centers to set those things aside because it's one thing to look for one blanket, but if you're a family of five, you need five yep. blankets, Andy. Yeah. So the number of household items, the number of linens and blankets that we'll be providing for people are going to be a lot more than we've ever seen probably in our history. And where can people drop off items? You can drop off items at our outreach centers. They're lo um, located one in Council Bluffs off 16th and Avenue D, okay. Alcorn uh, off Highway 31, and then right on our main campus as well. And so we're very grateful. Um, we're receiving a, a lot of donations that we're able to actually help people who are already coming through our doors. Yeah. And then monetary, I mean, can people... We actually have um, a monetary button on our website okay. at opendoormission.org. You can push that for 2019 flood. And any okay. of those designated gifts will go directly to families that we're helping get back on their feet. Okay. Well, anything else? Again, let's. The, the website is Open Door Mission. The website is opendoormission.org, and if you click on the volunteer button, you can be part of some of our teams okay. that are. We can't keep our shelves full just yeah. with our regular population. So now, last week, we served another 450 families that wow. came into our outreach centers. So just actually putting the items out onto the shelf so they're there for them to choose between corn or peas um, or whether they're going to get rice or potatoes. Right. Um, because now they're going back into their homes and everything, they've had to clean out their pantries. Several of the families that we served last weekend, everything was destroyed uh, that except for canned goods. So they were looking for boxed meals, macaroni and cheese, different cereal okay. things that got wet and you can't use so it's a little bit different what their the unique needs are um, rather than a regular population yeah. that we're serving well I want to thank you for coming on because again wanted to just do this special um, I really appreciate it what an awesome show. opportunity yeah. to bring the community together we are, there's so much collaboration and this is part of it yeah so, so thank you thank you so much and we will be right back Welcome back. I'm here with Brian Barks. He is the president and CEO of Food Bank for the Heartland. Brian, mm -hmm. thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you, Andy. Um, what 
a couple weeks of, yeah. of just, you know, devastation and craziness. So I want to talk about what mm. Food Bank for the Heartland, what you're kind of seeing coming from all of this. Sure. Right now, uh, the Food Bank serves as a supporter of first responders uh, in, in regards to uh, disaster. Uh, responding to a disaster. So what does that mean? Yeah, what does that, that mean? Yeah, that means that we go out and we, we uh, receive and, and support them with food, water, cleaning supplies, uh, kind of the basics that are needed right now. Right. Um, and so over the past um, uh, week, week and a half, two weeks, we've been uh, reaching out to um, national uh, people that supply us okay. with food and product so that we bring it into our building so that we can also pass it through to the Red Cross and the Salvation yeah. Army. Yeah, because a lot of those first responders, I mean, this is like 24 seven. This yes, is not is. just, yes, it you is. know, it's, yeah, all the time. Yes. So. And we've been accepting probably about six times as much product as we normally get yeah. on an average, um, average normal day of, of, of food banking. Uh, so it's been it's been a lot of work behind the scenes Absolutely. Uh, at our organization. A lot of people putting in a lot of hard work, um, but um, you know what? We've had great response from uh, from uh, retailers and wholesalers that uh, on the national level right. that have been bringing product to us. So from your standpoint, you're you're pushing product out there, mm -hmm. but you're also getting product in, yes. which also means additional volunteers. Uh, you know, right now one of the things that we have been blessed with is an abundance of volunteers. Okay. Uh, our calendar for the month of April is completely full. Okay. But we are going to have some opportunities that are going to be happening outside of our building. When I talk about our calendar being full, that's what we do inside the building. Sure. But we're going to have opportunities outside the building that are going to be connected to whether it's helping distribute food or getting information out into the community. We're going to have some need in that area. I'll tell you the one thing that, that is really going to be huge for us is even bigger than it is right now is not just supporting the first responders but it's going to be six seven eight nine months from I, now i was just going to ask about when, that when people are are trying to put their lives back together yeah. again and and the long haul you know the rush is right now right but this rebuild and this recovery is going to take months if not a year longer for yeah. many people yeah and that's where they're going to need a lot of our help so how can people that are watching this that want to help what do you need from them? Right now, dollars okay, is the best money. way. Money is the best. Yeah. I mean, it, it is the easiest and, and fastest way. Because then you can take those dollars and then go get what you, Absolutely. What you need. Absolutely. For you give us a dollar, we can, do, we can uh, distribute enough food for three meals. So it's faster. We can go out and shop for what we need and what we want and, uh, and then push yep. it out the, our door to, to get yeah. it where it needs to go. So how can people donate money to you? Go to our website, foodbankheartland.org. Click the donate button. Okay. make that gift we are grateful for everything okay we well thank you again for coming on this is kind of a last minute thing yeah. and, and i reached out to you but i know what you're doing is so important in community and people are looking for ways to help and so yeah and just to make clear our research where we support is virtually across the entire state of nebraska yeah. and a good section of western iowa yeah. as well all right brian thanks so thank much you, Andy. you're welcome and we will be right back Thank you all for joining me um, on this special show talking about how you can help with the flood relief um, in our community and around the state. Uh, I also want to give a big thank you to Mike, Malcolm, and Chris. We had an extra long show today, KPAO. Thank you for, for allowing us to present this information to community. And all that you guys do here on KPAO, really appreciate it. Uh, check out more on spiritofomaha.com and we will see you back here next week. Mm -hmm.